God, an infinite God who has no beginning and no end. Talk about knowledge. Can I tell you just for a moment, the Bible says that in Christ are hidden all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. You can find that in the book of Colossians. As a matter of fact, the Greek word gnosis, or where they get the word for Gnostics, that word, that Greek word gnosis, is used in the book of 1 John almost 40 times. Jesus said that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free in the Gospel of John. And the Greek word is gnosis. There is a, there is a mystery that God has had that He's unveiled in these latter times. He's unveiled in Christ. The mysteries of creation, the mysteries, the knowledge of the universe, the knowledge of creation, the physics of all that is, the Bible says, is found in Christ. In Him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus invites anybody you know, to come to Him and learn of Him. That's the neat thing about God. I can sit here around me or thousands of books all around me as I'm doing this podcast. I can study quantum physics. I can read about black uh, black holes. I can study dark energy. I can look at all the concepts. But the question is, does the concept lead me to the face of a personal God who loves me and cares about every hair on my head? Let me tell you something. Jesus can lead us to the face of God. I'm telling you as a, you know, as a Christian, I'm telling the Luciferian, the Satanists, the, the, the elite even that might listen to this. Though you think me a puny Christian, let me tell you of the presence and power of God in my life and how many times I have seen the authority of Jesus Christ cause the demons to cringe and bow and confess in every case of deliverance that the Jesus Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth. Your power demons would also do that. Have you ever wondered why the demons run at the authority of Jesus Christ? Have you wondered why they don't want you to read the word of God because in it is animated the very presence and voice of God himself? The word of God is said to be powerful and alive. It's active. It's living words, Jesus said. And that's why maybe you feel like you can't get into it and you cannot read it and you cannot look at it. Well, I want to engage you and ask you, you know, these questions. Do you have any joy? Are you sure concerning, you know, what you believe? What is your motivation? What is the motivation of your life and what you really believe and what motivates you? Let me tell you what my motivation is. I have a love and a passion for your life as a human being because Christ died on the cross for you and that I, I understand that it pulsates in my being. You know, my motivation isn't to come to win. It's not to win in some kind of engagement of power between you and me. If I could win you to Christ, that's the only winning I could, uh, I could, uh, I could uh, dance over. To win you to a personal knowledge of the living God that you would have coursing through your being a power beyond anything you knew. A mercy and a love and a joy and an absolute assurance of destiny, of immortality, of knowledge. Oh my goodness, can I tell you that once you come to know Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the living God, the infinite Spirit of God comes to live in your life. How he gives you that knowledge and insight opens your eyes to the revelation of all of Scripture. How God can reveal to you and give to you and, and bless you. Let me tell you where the knowledge is. Let me tell you where the information is. Let me ask you, have you found what you're looking for? I asked an 86-year-old man who is reading a book on ta Tantra sex, and he had every kind of spiritual reading, and, and he was a teacher, and his name was Bill. I met him in an Arby's, and I just engaged him in conversation, and I said, uh, finally, in our discussions of all kinds of spiritual evolution and knowledge and information, I looked at the 86-year-old man, and I said, Bill, have you found what you're looking for? And once again, Bill put his head down. And sadly, as he shook his head right to left, his jaws shaking, indicating no, after all this time and all the information and all the... He, he has not found the face of God. He has not found the ultimate center. He has not found the point of reference. He has not found who he really is, his origins or his destiny. And Satanist and everyone else that listens, I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is God in human flesh, prophesied by the prophets, worshipped by the angels of God, spoken of by the apostles, 
raised from the from the dead on the third day, just as prophesied and promised. The Bible says, who through the spirit of holiness was raised with power and declared to be the Son of God. Romans chapter one. So I, I, I do embrace and engage those who are Satanists, Luciferians, New Agers, others who believe in a alternative spiritual evolution. Have you found what you're looking for? Has, has it led you to the ultimate? Do you have assurance? Do you have joy? Do you have life? What's going to happen when you die? Do the demons tell you the truth? One last thing to share with you. I give you Judas. Judas. The scripture says Jesus knew which of them did not believe from the very beginning. Of all the uh, of all the uh, disciples, those who became apostles, Judas was among them. Judas was there. Judas was learning. Judas was uh, studying. It's not that God did not love Judas. It was not that God fatally fixed Judas to become the betrayer. But let me tell you something, that in his heart there was greed and lie and deception. He didn't believe, but he hung around. He dipped into the funds. He, the Bible says that Satan entered him, and for 30 pieces of silver he betrayed Christ. After he did so, after Satan used his life, after Satan entered him with all of that thrilling energy and the acquiring of those pieces of, you know, those 30 pieces of silver, and Judas couldn't handle all of that, what was the end run of Judas's life? Did you know that Judas went out and hung himself in an emotional melee?